This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Can you 3D print a 3D printer? If you ask most people, they would say yes. Most of these parts on this 3D printer are in fact 3D printed. But there's always a couple of parts that you have to buy off the shelf. On this printer, we actually have a mostly 3D printed extruder, but now we're gonna add a 3D printed nozzle. I found these 3D printed nozzles at a 3D printing convention. This is from a company called Incus, I-N-C-U-S. And they have a special 3D printing process that lets them print out really finely detailed parts. I have another metal 3D printed part in this hand, and then I have the nozzle in this hand. And they're both pretty small, but if we take a close look at these, you can see the level of detail on this 3D printed nozzle is simply insane. Even the actual hole, that's a 0.4 millimeter orifice on the tip of the nozzle is 3D printed. Whereas this 3D printing process looks like it's struggling to make these roughly one or two millimeter wide holes. It's just an entirely different order of magnitude in terms of the printed quality and the amount of detail that they can get with their special process. Now, what is the special process? Well, instead of having a powder of metal that's hit with a laser or electrons to melt it into a 3D printed part, they actually print this using a process that's very similar to your resin 3D printers. There's a UV curable resin paste that's filled with microscopic particles of metal. I think it's supposed to have the same consistency as toothpaste, like it's a very specialized material. And they basically squeegee it on one layer at a time, cure that layer, and then squeegee the next layer on. Once they're finished printing their parts, they rinse away all of the uncured paste, burn away the UV cured resin, and then they put it through a sintering process which heats this loosely bound part until the individual metal particles fuse together. And the result is this. The nozzle that I have is a magnetic stainless steel. I didn't do any post-processing on this part except for one area, and that's on the back of the nozzle here. When you install a nozzle into a 3D printer, that back surface is what you use to form the seal between the heat break and the nozzle, which prevents plastic from leaking out. And although they do have a pretty good surface finish on these parts, I figured I could just clean that up a little bit. This thing has kind of a sugar cube looking texture. It kind of looks matte, but it's actually really quite smooth compared to most metal 3D prints. You can see the surface roughness, but it's really so smooth that you can't really feel it, if that makes sense. It's just kind of like a satiny finish with like a really small amount of roughness. But a lot of nozzle and hot end manufacturers like to brag about how smooth the inside of their nozzles is. This hasn't been post-processed, it hasn't been drilled out or polished or anything like that. So it's got a relatively rough surface finish and I'm curious if that's gonna affect print quality. The last thing to be concerned about this is this is a stainless steel nozzle, so it's not gonna have as good of heat transfer as a copper nozzle. Although they told me they can print with copper, which, you know, I guess that would make a better nozzle, but we're working with the nozzle that we've got today, and this is a stainless steel nozzle. The bonus is this will be slightly more abrasion resistant, so if I wanted to print carbon fiber or something, we could. All right, our print is all finished up. This is our control piece printed in clear PETG. Now let's get that nozzle changed out. We're just going to remove this um, sock thing, and then we'll unscrew the nozzle. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, we got a little melted PTG in there, that's fine. We'll just pull that off. So here goes. Look at that, it threads right in. That's the fine precision of the Incus 3D printer. It's very nice. So we'll just go ahead and tighten this up. And again, those are just 3D printed threads with no post-processing. Um, it just threads right in. Place your bets in the comments down below. Let me know if you think this is gonna work or not. And just to make sure there's no trickery going on here, I'm not going to put the silicone sock back onto the hot end. That way you can see this is truly the 3D printed nozzle at work here. If you wanna see some really up close pictures of this nozzle, I'll be uploading those pictures to my Squarespace website because that gives me the best opportunity to show you some really high resolution shots of it. I'll show them on screen here, but if you click the link in the video description and check out my Squarespace site, you'll be able to see much higher resolution images and you can zoom in on them and 
get those glorious details of all the stuff that's going on with this 3D printer nozzle. I find that having your own Squarespace website is a great way to set up a blog and show off some interesting science projects like this. So thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. If you want to get started with your own Squarespace website, go to squarespace.com slash NathanBuildsRobots and you'll get 10% off your first website or domain name purchase. You'll be able to create your own website and upload really cool pictures like these cool pictures of the 3D printed nozzle. All right, so while this print gets started, I'm gonna do some last minute tuning. Now I'm probably going to have to slow the print down a little bit to account for the nozzle not being able to melt the plastic as quickly. And I'm also gonna have to adjust that Z offset. And you can kind of see this plate is warped. It's really not the right size plate for this heated bed, but we're gonna make it work. It's gonna work fine. Okay, that's uh, really pressing down into the, the bed there. Let's see if we can move the tool head up a little bit. All right, now we're extruding just fine. Okay, let's get you some close-ups so you can see how this nozzle is working. It seems like it's sort of printing pretty well. It's not perfect, but you know, it's a lot better than I was expecting. We'll put this guy right next to it for reference. Actually, I have to go, so I'm not gonna be able to finish watching this print but I trust it. You know, it's going pretty well right now. We're just gonna uh, leave this printer unattended and hopefully it works out okay. All right, so I'm back and wouldn't you know it, the print failed. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a post-mortem analysis here. This was the original nozzle, and that's a copper nozzle with a tungsten insert. So it's, you know, really high quality, pretty decent heat transfer. And what I can see here is that these walls look a little bit shinier than what I have on the steel nozzle print. Overall, I'm not too disappointed with this though. I mean, it mostly printed. Nozzle didn't clog or jam or anything. It pushed all the filament through. It's just it wasn't getting to the right temperatures to be able to continue printing properly. So uh, we had a little failure here. And when I break this apart, yeah, it is pretty brittle. So I think I might even need to turn up the temperatures a little bit. I might as well go up to 255. And I've decreased the max volumetric flow rate from about 12 to 4. Save those settings. Now the old print took about 40 minutes. This new print is going to take a little over an hour. Not a huge difference in time. Slightly hotter, slightly slower. I think that'll get us some good results. This reminds me of the good old days when you'd buy an Ender 3 and it didn't really quite work out of the box and you had to do some troubleshooting to get it working. Uh, you know, tweaking the slicer settings and whatnot. And I do think it adds a like a lot more excitement to the hobby that you lose when you're able to just print things. Especially for all you people that don't actually have anything useful to print, I think you could definitely use a printer like this or some crazy projects that require a little bit of tuning and thinking instead of just printing things mindlessly, most of which is just plastic waste. This Benchy means something to me, and it's breaking records. We're forging new grounds in the world of additive manufacturing. So yeah, let's just uh, switch it back to time-lapse mode. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. Ooh yeah, that looks nice. I miss having a printer where it's doing something cool and you just wanna get up really close and watch it print. It did those overhangs pretty nice, didn't it? Looks like it's just wrapping up and the print quality on this thing is absolutely perfect. I love to see high quality prints like this and I hate to say it but I haven't seen a print of this quality in a while because all the new machines are so focused on marketing the speed of the printers that they're making and they're just completely forgetting that hey maybe some people like to produce high quality prints so why don't you provide some slower profiles that just slow way down and get you some really nice looking prints. So let's pop this off. Let's take a look at the print quality. Ah, that looks real good. Super crisp details. Perfect overhangs. It's pure decadence. This is a really good looking print. And here's the 40 minute Benchy that was printed with the other nozzle. 
the print that was made with the steel 3D printed nozzle ended up looking a little bit nicer. I mean, they're pretty close, but this one is nicer. All that on a 3D printed nozzle, who would have thought? The one on the left was printed with the Fetus nozzle that has a copper body and a tungsten insert. And the one on the right was printed with our uh, stainless steel 3D printed nozzle. And this is really nice. It's not falling apart like this first attempt was. This one, I think it just needed to be a little bit hotter and the plastic wasn't getting up to the proper temperature for printing. But heat it up a little bit, slow it down a little bit, and everything turns out just fine. That just goes to show the quality and the craftsmanship you get with this super cool nozzle over here. You can just 3D print your 3D printer. Just go ahead and 3D print a nozzle whenever you need one. So if you thought that was pretty cool, what I'm gonna have to ask you to do right now is subscribe to the channel. Thanks to your guys' support, I can keep doing cool stuff like this. If any of you are interested in getting one of Incus's 3D printers, well, I hate to break it to you, but they're quite expensive. However, if you're working in some kind of specialty aerospace or robotics or super high-end research lab, you might be able to afford one. So give them a call and tell them their pal Nathan Builds Robots sent you. The quality on this print is quite good. Just super clean, crisp corners. I love it. All right. Amazing stuff. I'll present this to the guys at Incus and see if they're impressed. You can, in fact, 3D print a 3D printer nozzle. I might have to get a copper nozzle next time, and uh, I don't know, what else would you like to see made using this crazy precise technology? I think it's absolutely insane that the actual 0.4 millimeter orifice that actually extrudes the plastic was 3D printed and it wasn't drilled out by a tiny little drill bit or anything. That just goes to show an insane level of precision. What other parts of a 3D printer do you think I could 3D print? I guess I could do the hot end, the hot end heat sink, maybe some stepper motors, extruder gears. Also use my affiliate links because that really helps me out and it helps me keep this channel going and bringing you the best 3D printer content in the universe. Remember everyone, Nathan Builds Robots is the definitive source of 3D printed 3D printer parts and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks and goodbye.